So I finally got around to making this video that I've been putting off for a while now because I've been playing the game a lot and partly because I've not been sure how to structure this video. But here it is. This is going to be my review of Vigor, my thoughts and impressions. The game was initially released back in 2018 for Nintendo Switch and Xbox and up until early December it has arrived to PlayStation and it's free to play. Though PlayStation users won't be part of the crossplay between Nintendo Switch and Xbox, it has been exclusive to those two platforms up until now. So what's the game about? Well, a nuclear war has basically destroyed the whole of Europe, except a small portion of Norway, and a few have survived, or what is referred to as Outlanders, so you can already tell it's a post-war apocalyptic setting. It's a loot and shoot game. Your main objective is to gather resources and loot in the form of weapons, ammunition, hardware tools like nails and wire, food and other resources to help you build and upgrade your own shelter. It's set in 1991, so expect weapons like M2 carbine, M16, SVDs and Mosins. The game looks really beautiful too. It runs at 720p 30fps which isn't the best. I would like to play at 60fps. I did read somewhere that someone preferred 1080p at 30fps but I don't know how I feel about that. I'm interested to know what you guys think. Would you rather play in 720p at 60fps or 1080p at 30fps? Leave a comment below and let me know. When you launch into the game, you'll be put into the tutorial that teaches you the basics on looting and how to use your map for navigation. On your person, you can carry multiple weapons and items or resources. There is a limit to how much you can carry, so you'll have to choose carefully, but don't take too long, otherwise you will get shot. Which brings me on to my next point. If you do get killed, you leave with nothing. All the loot you have, you will lose it. So if you do have valuable loot, say you manage to secure the airdrop, that gets dropped in once every game, you might want to get out to an exit point as soon as you can. And if that risk reward isn't enough, if you do manage to secure the airdrop, your position will be known to everyone else periodically on the map, so you could get hunted down. If you do manage to escape alive, you'll return to your shelter where you can access numerous upgrades in various ways with the resources you've found and collected. This is where you generate materials, food and shelter upgrades that also change the physical appearance of your building. You also have a record player that become collectibles throughout the game if you can find them. The materials you generate, they'll be used to craft weapons and ammunition, medical supplies and so on to help you in encounters. Each shelter upgrade gives you the ability to craft better weapons but take longer each time to complete and the development uses real time so while that's happening you might want to jump into an encounter. You also have a firing range which is where you'll probably spend a lot of your time trying out weapon handling, recoil and damage. Interesting to note is that the Scarecrows have the same amount of health as an Outlander, so definitely get a feel for each weapon before you go into an encounter. Speaking of which, the encounters is where you will gather your resources and your loot. The main goal of the game is to gather as much as you can to constantly build and upgrade your shelter and return safely with all your loot. You do have quite a few maps to choose from, I believe there's about 9 at the moment. They each have their own terrain, some are larger than others, and they're mostly outdoors. The maps themselves do change, sometimes it's daylight, sometimes it's night, which just adds another element of strategy to the game. There is only so long you can spend in each encounter before the radiation arrives. Spend too long in the affected area and you will die. It's sort of a battle royale element. The radiation itself can start from any direction and work its way across the map and you have a number of different exits to choose from so you might want to choose an exit on the map where the radiation is last to reach. Your strategy and how you want to play is entirely up to you. If you want to go in quietly, sneak around and just gather loot, avoiding gunfights then you can quite easily providing you do be careful of course. Or if you do want to go in hunting other Outlanders down and steal their loot by all means but just know if you do want some of the more valuable loot say from like an airdrop or the locked containers then you will most likely run into other Outlanders so be well prepared. Take some first aid, take a decent weapon and plenty of ammunition. When it comes to loadouts there's plenty of weapons you can choose from and they're all unique in their own way. 
What's really good is when you are loading into a game, you can see what weapons other Outlanders are taking in with them, which can determine how you want to engage. For example, if quite a few people are running shotguns, then you know to keep the distance. If quite a lot of people are running assault rifles and snipers, then you know it's going to get really busy at the airdrop and other valuable loot sites. Also worth mentioning is the in-game currency called crowns. These can be used in the game lobby in three different ways, either to boost the chance of better loot, increase the value of the airdrop or protect your own loot if you get killed. They can also be used to customise your character's outfit. Having said all that, the game isn't without its problems. In my opinion, the game just lacks basic mechanics. For example, some things that seem really obvious to mantle you can't, or the game will just register it after a few attempts. And the movement in general can be quite delayed, especially when you do try to play a little faster. But aside from that, there are more simple things like having the ability to cancel a reload to change your weapon or sprint, which could save you that one second from being killed and losing all of your loot. In general, I just think it needs to be polished a lot better. It is definitely playable and you will have fun whether you play alone or with a friend in duos. I have been enjoying it a lot, mostly because there's not been a game like this on the PlayStation Store ever before, apart from DayZ which is also developed by Bohemia. I would personally like to see a lot more come into the game in terms of content and support. Now that it's on PlayStation the fan base could grow and we could see that more. But I do hope Bohemi can take the opportunity they have to really make it into a well developed game just to make it thoroughly enjoyable. Anyway, I hope you do find that helpful. Remember it is free to play and there's more information in the description for you. I do play quite often and I would like to start posting videos on the game so if you want to see more, some gameplay tips and tricks or just entertainment then subscribe to the channel, give it a like and share it because it's the only way I'll know if you're interested. Take care and I'll hopefully see you on the next one.